It's nerdy and maybe makes no sense, but uh, I love it. So I think it was about a little over a month ago when uh, my good friend Justin reached out to me with some incredible news. Now, Justin and his production company, Captive Creative, uh, they have a new location here in Houston that they have named Captive Studios. And this is a studio that you could rent in Houston. And the big news was the fact that they had just bought a brand new LED wall. Now, primarily they shoot a lot of high-end commercial work and I've had the pleasure of working with them on quite a few amazing projects. And so when they got this new wall in, he thought of me. He gave me a call and said, hey, got this new wall in. We'd love to make something awesome. And so pretty much kind of gave me the run of the studio to be able to make something cool. Now, if you've been following my journey on this channel at all, you'll know that I have been obsessed with virtual productions going as far back as a few years ago, trying to figure out how to do them on green screens and then ultimately getting myself to a place where I could actually get some experience on a set, um, actually working with Justin and a few other creators to make a really awesome robot sword fight uh, on an LED wall, which was absolutely nuts. And then from there, just trying to do more and more projects, whether that was some stuff with baseball or just throwing in the LED wall where I can on some YouTube videos, because I do personally believe in this technology and it excites the hell out of me. But this was going to be different. Justin wanted me to be able to actually make a film. He wanted me to create an actual project, something that we could show the finished work and this was going to be kind of my first real attempt at this. Now, what was really interesting was when we hopped on the call, we started coming up with ideas. We didn't want to just make anything. We wanted to make something that could actually have some impact and possibly get some, some views and to be able to get some feedback on that work. So that way we could really progress and start to see some improvements in our own work. And this is where the idea hit. It sort of hit me on April 3rd when we were on the call that May the 4th was just a month away. And I didn't know if we could actually pull together a Star Wars film in a month's time, but I knew I definitely wanted to give it a shot because let's face it, I love Star Wars, I'm a little nerdy, and I've always wanted to create films in the world of big IP. I mean, my dream is to be able to film for Star Wars or Marvel or DC working with these big production companies and being able to make popcorn movies that people love to go and see, but also tell a pretty compelling story. And so this was my chance. I was gonna have two full days inside the actual studio to pull this off. And I was gonna be able to make a film that honestly, I would've only ever dreamed I would've gotten a chance to even try to work on, but I knew I was gonna need a lot of help. And that's where pretty much all the work actually started. In order to pull this entire thing together, I knew I was going to need a team. And so obviously having Justin at my side was going to be a huge element of it. But we actually were able to bring in Greg also from Lifted Media. Now, Greg and his team does a lot of commercial work as well. And so the three of us working in commercial space, but not really in the film space, we're going to have our work cut out for us. But a couple of nice things were going to help us out. Obviously, from my side, working in commercial and doing this YouTube thing, I had a lot of gear and a lot of access to equipment. Also, Justin, obviously being the owner of Captive Studios and Captive Creative, was going to be able to let us use the LED wall, and he has a ton of experience in Unreal Engine. But Greg was sort of that last missing piece that really set everything up because him and his team works a lot in visual effects. They do a lot of work for oil and gas companies here in the Texas area. And so being able to bring in his expertise on this project is absolutely what took it to the next level. Now, because of scheduling and a few other things, we actually didn't end up being able to film until April 21st and the 22nd, which meant that we really spent about two weeks in pre-production and then we spent the two days of production and then basically had about a week and a half to finish up post. Uh, this definitely introduced quite a few problems, but Personally, it's under pressure that I find that I work the best. For starters, in the middle of pre-production, I had to go to NAB, and so I had to really learn to rely on my team, and thank God Justin held up his end. You know, Justin did a really good job of bringing in some amazingly talented creators to help us work on this project. He also went as far as to get some storyboards done for us that would actually help us through the process of being able to create this film. And in that, I actually decided to take on the role as the DP of this project because I wanted to get a little bit more experience with actually operating the camera when it comes to shooting 
on the LED wall, especially in the world of lighting. Now, when it comes to the gear that we use on this project, we use quite a bit of gear. I mean, it's definitely gonna look like a super expensive set. Although I will say everybody who brought out gear pretty much donated their time and their gear to this production. So our budget on this is going to seem like it's very high, but it's really because it's just a bunch of gear that we already owned and that we were just really excited to bring together to the project. For starters, the camera we use on this was the Red Komodo X. You guys know this is one of my favorite cameras of all time. I absolutely love this thing. And even though, yes, I did have a Red V Raptor that we could have used on the project, we found that through testing the cameras that the Komodo X was actually gonna work out way better, especially because of that global shutter. The only camera that might've been better for this would have probably been the Raptor X, but didn't have time to get my hands on it as we were on such a short time crunch. As far as lenses, we shot everything on the Irix 45 and the 150 for a few specialty shots. I kind of want to shoot everything on those Irix lenses because one, I absolutely love those lenses, and two, I just thought it was kind of fun to have a white Stormtrooper camera and a white lens and be shooting a Stormtrooper. I know it doesn't make any sense and actually does not change the film whatsoever, but I just thought that was gonna be pretty cool. But we went with those Irix lenses and they actually turned out really good. One of the things I love about the Irix lenses is just how clinical and sharp they are, which was an absolute must when it comes to doing visual effects. Having a lens with a ton of character is great. However, when you have to do VFX over top of that character, sometimes that can be more difficult. And so for us, what we learned through working with Greg was having those clinical lenses really helped out a ton. Obviously, we had tons of lights and everything under the sun, everything from aperture to nanlite to anything in between because we partnered with an amazing DP by the name of Duncan. Duncan is an amazing DP based here in Houston and working with him, I learned a lot. He taught me a lot on set about lighting and then we also learned together a lot about how to actually light up against an LED wall to be able to light our scene without having that light shine onto the actual screen itself because that will wash out all of your contrast, note. Uh, but we learned a lot during that process. So when it came to the gear that went into making this project, realistically, we just grabbed what we had, which because most of us work in the commercial space, we had some pretty good gear. We were able to make something awesome. Where we did try to spend a lot of our time and money is on things like set design, prop, costume and things like that. We were very lucky to have some amazing volunteer actors who would step into their roles. And like, for example, we had Zach who was playing our Mandalorian. He actually already had the Mandalorian suit. So if you are someone who's trying to do something in this world of big IP, one bonus tip I'll give you is look for cosplayers because nine times out of 10, not only will they have the costume, but they already know how to embody the character. Uh, the other thing when it came to props, we really just went around and found props that we already had, whether that was Star Wars fans or fanatics who, who wanted to donate their props to this film, which absolutely helped us out a lot. One area that we did get some help in when it came to props was from Crimson Dawn. They actually made the lightsabers that we used uh, at the end of the film, and they actually make lightsabers. And so they were nice enough to donate a few of those to us to be able to use as references, as well as just kind of play with <laughs> behind the scenes on set. Um, but one area for sure where we spent money, and this is, this was actually really tough, uh, was on the Stormtrooper suit. Now, we could not find anyone in the Houston area with a Stormtrooper suit that was available on the day, so this meant we had to buy one. Now, I did not realize that Stormtrooper costumes cost this much, but this suit was over a $1,000, and we were supposed to have four Stormtroopers in our project. We quickly realized that we had to figure out a way around this, so we actually pulled out one of the oldest filmmaking tricks in the book, and that was we just cloned our Stormtrooper. This actually made for a really cool, interesting VFX shot where we would do these shots where we'd have our Stormtrooper play one, and then we'd switch out his blaster with another one and have him shift to a different position. Uh, and the way we were able to pull this off was just simple by just locking off our shot and then literally uh, setting our focus, not shifting that, and then having him move in these different places. Once you add in that, plus you add in a little bit of set design, a little bit of costume, some VFX, um, I personally think that it turned out really great. One thing that helped us out a lot with this effect also was the fact that the small HD monitor that I was using actually has something called image capture on it, which allows you to literally take a photo of your frame 
and then you can have it drop in the opacity so that way you can physically move the person and see where they were before. So that way, when it comes to setting up framing, you're not really guessing. Now, not all monitors are gonna have this, but this was a feature that quickly became one of my favorites, and I'm so glad that we had it, especially for this shot. Speaking of VFX, as I mentioned before, all the VFX were done by the amazing team over at Lifted, including the score. One thing that I learned about VFX was just really how much is possible. You know, one shot we wanted to do was our uh, stormtrooper getting shot. And so I learned a lot about the process of creating markers for his chest and then seeing how we're gonna actually shoot this and shooting it multiple different directions and different ways. So that way it's easy to be tracked in post and being able to have that effect added on. And it's stuff like that that for me was absolutely crucial as i mentioned at the beginning of this my goal eventually is to get a job at marvel and shoot big movies i mean that's ultimately why i picked up a camera to begin with and for me going through this process taught me so much more about this one other thing that it taught me was that two days of production is just not a lot of the time um, and if you want to make a really long short film you're going to take quite a few days to pull this off if not weeks or months and so you know what we were able to pull off in a two-day time period and a week and a half of post I am honestly blown away you know as far as I'm concerned one of me, Justin, and Greg's biggest things was, we don't care how short the video is, we just want what you see to look amazing. And honestly, I'm really proud of what we were able to pull together in such a short period of time. At this point, I'm not gonna like, I know this might be a little bit eager to say, but like, this is by far one of my favorite pieces of content that I've ever created. And in fact, this might be one of the pieces of content that I can actually say like feels like a film to me. I make a lot of YouTube videos, I make a lot of Instagram shorts and TikToks and all that other stuff. And to me, that always just feels like content. But this felt like the first time I made a movie. And this is the journey that I'm personally really ready to walk down. I mean, on this channel, I talk a lot about camera gear and, and lighting and, and tutorials and things like that. And, and that won't change too much. But the truth is, is that like, I am ready to take that next step and start working on films and ready to move into that uh, direction in my life. And I've been wanting to do it for the longest time. And the truth is I've just been scared. I've been scared that I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if people are gonna like it. And I honestly think my content has even suffered on this channel from time to time because I've been so indecisive with what I wanna do. But it's definitive, especially after this experience, especially after seeing the final product. This is what I like. This is what I wanna do and it's what I've always wanted to do. And so I would say this to anybody who's out there who is creating in one space because you need to financially. First of all, totally understand that. I mean, I didn't shoot real estate because I loved houses that much. I did it because it was financially viable. And then even working in commercial space, it was the same thing. It's just financially viable. But I would strongly recommend that you, and I'm saying this to myself as well, try to find time to pursue those true passions. The real reason why you picked up a camera because when you see that final product, it will absolutely make it all worth it. And quite honestly, this is the journey. This is where I'm going next. I plan to make more of these, so be on the lookout. Be sure to follow me over on Instagram because if you want to be on one of these sets or help out on one of these projects, that would be amazing. So follow me on Instagram and just let me know uh, because we will be putting out a call here pretty soon because we're already working on the next one. Uh, so I'm really, really excited about this new trajectory. But without further ado, thank you to everyone who helped make this video possible from our colorist to all of the props to Justin's mom, who was amazing on set. She just made everything so much easier and she kept a fresh Red Bull in my hand at all times because Lord knows I needed it. Um, but just thank you to everyone who helped make this short film possible. But without further ado, I'll let you guys check that out. And thank you so much for checking out this video. Peace.